words of courage. When trials come, you are my strength, the strength of my life. I stand in your love and overcome. Oh, I love the messages we receive. Thank you, Father, for the word that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I have a few updates for you. Uh, we had a meeting with the banker the other day, and we have been approved for a loan for the building. So I have to say, I got a little bit emotional sitting there in the, in the office and had to pull out a hanky because <laughs> I was really overwhelmed. Um, we are required for 30 to 35% down. Um, it's how they do it with different buildings, different things, and with different reasonings. Uh, Alan and I are able to gift that out of our retirement and some from the church. Uh, we have been advised by the banker to request from our congregation to see if you're okay with us using church funds and to ask if you'd be willing to also provide some donations towards this as well. Um, before I go forward on this, I just want to let you know that we plan to pay this building out early. I think it's a 15, 20 year loan that we're looking at because we kept it at a request of $500 a month because we don't want to overextend ourselves with the rest of the expenses for the monthly things. But I really believe it'll be paid off early. I really do. And Christina and I and Alan have also talked about this a little bit, that when it is paid off, and we are getting bigger, we'll be having probably two, possibly three sermons. I have no doubt about this. I really do. So we'll have to eventually find a bigger building. And I'm not saying this is a question, but this is in the future, but I really don't think it's too far off. We plan to keep that building because we can use that as like our homeless office shelter, or not shelter, but building and activities and studies and things like that, and in some cases storage. But the attempt is, the thought at this point is we're going to have actually two buildings at some point very soon. So. Um, but, uh, we've been advised to ask you if you're okay with us using the tithing that we receive from all of us to make payments on. I've said many times the money that's given to the church is to be used for the church and those that we can help. To have a bigger building, we'll have more people. The more that we can reach, the more that we can help. So when we are all done with this a sermon today, if you have questions on any of this, we'll do our best to answer. And let us know that you find it's okay that we do this. Um, the church is going to be the owner of the loan, but Alan and I are going to be the guarantors, like co-pay, or co-signer, co yeah. <laughs> so, then I'm, um, tomorrow, we have an appointment with an attorney to meet us over at the building, to go over it, a, a, not an attorney, excuse me, a realtor, big difference, <laughs> a realtor is coming to meet us there, go through the building, give us some ideas, and get some more information on it. So, and uh, for those of you watching online, we're asking also if you'd like to give to help us get this loan paid down or a better deposit down on it. Uh, you can send it to Church of God's Word. Uh, this is the text, 833-245-5130. You can email us at the Church of God's Word at uh, live.outlook.com. No, and then there's also the mailing address. The P.O. Box is 893 Fargo, North Dakota, 58107 to the Church of God's Word. So at this point, that's where we're standing. And I tell you, this timing for the message of courage that the Lord has put on me is really hitting home. <laughs> so you've got some time to ponder that. And if you have questions, let us know. And anything that you'd want us to ask with the real estate agent to Feel, feel, feel free to let us know and we'll bring those up too. But it's it's getting to be real. <laughs> so it's one step at a time and the Lord is working with us and I really have confidence that we can do this. So as far as that, as I said, if you have questions at the end of service, let us know. We'll be happy to help answer those as best we can. So Father, Thank you for what you do for our church. Thank you for helping us grow. Thank you for the gifts that you have provided for us to move forward into a bigger building, to reach more, to do more for those of us that give and want to see 
your children be helped in many ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So then, for the uh, Proverbs today, 11, 24, and 5. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Now, this wasn't intentionally found, giving what I had said prior to this, because I had already had this before we had actually had a meeting with the man at the bank. So I figure God is intertwining many things for us as to how he decides things are done. But as I said, we are a <clears throat> very big church, small in bodies perhaps, but when you can be reached around the world in little things that you do, which are huge for the people that receive it, that makes us an awesomely big church in my book. You don't have to have thousands of people in the seat to do big things through the Lord. So thank you, Father, for the gifts that you provide for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And today's sermon is on courage. And I've been holding on to a lot of that in the last few weeks. The courage is the ability to do something that frightens someone. Strength in the face of pain or fear. In Hebrew, the definition is, or the pronunciation is Amos. The definition is to be alert physically or mentally. Confirm, be courageous, be of good courage. Be steadfast-minded, be strong, strengthen self. So it's, you know, a lot of people talk about liquid courage. Oh, yeah, people tend to get a little braver when they've had a couple of drinks. That's not liquid courage, that's kind of stupid courage. <laughs> you know, people tend to have an opinion better than they usually do otherwise. But when you think of courage for yourself, what do you think? Do you have any? You know, a lot of times people think, I can't do that. Well, if it's been put in you, you have it in you to do it. That idea has not been put into you by accident or, you know, something yeah, like that. There's a reason. You have to realize you do have the courage, but you just don't know how much you have. And it's all done by faith, and it is scary, without a doubt. It can be terrifying to take that step of faith. Walking into the banker's office, I'd like to think on the outside I look pretty calm and collected. On the inside I'm going, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, like a weed in the wind. However, you got to go forward. You have to do it for yourself, to give yourself the opportunity to strengthen and find out what you have. You know. And encourages in many ways. Like when we're younger, somebody wanted you to help move some furniture, a fridge, a couch. No big deal. You didn't even think twice about it. Bend down, pick it up, and haul it out, right? That's just courage on demand because you got the courage to pick it up. But then when you get older, sometimes your courage shifts gears. <laughs> it's like, well, let's see, that thing probably weighs, and how many steps? It so you're, <laughs> you gotta have the courage to do it, but you have the brains to do it the right way, you know. Because now the idea of me picking up a 200-pound couch is not an option. <laughs> There's a fine line I've said between brave and stupid, <laughs> you know. But courage also has common sense with it, and it is a wonderful thing to have. Yeah. Amen. But then when you get older, you start to talk to yourself about things too. Because when you're little, your courage is there. You know how you hear children say that child has no fear? And nothing but courage because they're wanting to learn and do and see and give and do. And, well, we have to have that. But we have to use a little more smarts with it. So do you start thinking, well, I'm too old to do that. You're too old to go outside and sit by the fireplace? Well, yeah. I'm too weak. Well, get up. Use your faith. That's where it comes from. You've got to have your faith in there to help your courage grow. You know, but what is it that I cannot do anymore? Why? Sometimes things do limit what you can do, but then you have alternatives with the courage for things to do that you didn't do in that way before. It's not that you can't do it anymore. God just gives you a different avenue of doing things. You know, things change. Okay, you broke your leg. 
so you can't just walk like you normally do. Well, you find alternatives, and it takes courage to get up and try that different alternative. You're afraid you might fall over or stub your leg because it's, you know, broken. They have different things to try. Everybody always used crutches. Well, you don't see a lot of that anymore. They have these nifty little cart things, you know, you put your knee on and scoot along and thinking, gee, it'd be fun to have a couple of those and have a race down the Walmart aisles. <laughs> now, again, yeah, fine line between courage and stupid. <laughs> However, the child in me would really like to do it. <laughs> but it takes courage to do things. But with your, with your courage, you have to have your faith, your endurance, your love, and your patience. Not one of the things that God has put in us works by itself. Any different than we do is from head to toe. It's all connected. It all fires off differently. The brain tells the body to do something, the body does it. It's all a united process. You're not gifted with one thing. You are gifted with everything. The Lord gave you all this for a reason. To learn, to grow, to love, to give, to shine, to help. We went to a concert the other night. I'm going to put you on the spot, Christina, sorry. <laughs> there was this man walking around, and you could see he had some processing issues going on. And he was walking through the aisles to find out where he was sitting. And we could see this, and then he moved a couple rows ahead. And this one lady, she didn't know she was just going to say, you could sit here. Well, Chris, we had seen this lady over there waving over, but there was a pillar, so this man couldn't see it. Christina jumped up before anybody else even thought about it. And this is courage. When you're in a strange place, you don't know these people, walks over to this man and points, there's your lady, the lady waiting for you over there. Hallelujah! And good to you, you know? That's courage. We're not a town. We're in a big room with lots of people. A lot of people might be thinking, even though you're in a church, you're in a Christian concert, people are going to be thinking, what's the deal with that guy? But you don't think of it. You respond. Instant courage. I was tickled. I thought it was great. I'm hoping that they have that on film somewhere so it can be on their Facebook. This is what it is. His concert was about faith. Well, it takes faith to get up and help somebody with your courage. Amen. Yet don't do it alone. The Lord is guiding you and he's taking care of it all. Amen. You know, it takes a big step of faith to use your courage. Hallelujah. But your courage is a wonderful thing. It gets you to the next place. Glory to God. I have found I have more courage than I ever thought. Because the idea of me ever standing up here years ago, I would have laughed at somebody and just walked away and probably went and got a drink instead. You know. But it changes. You grow. Yeah, and it took courage, I thought, for us to go to the bank and ask for money. But you're not prompted to do these things without the Lord putting it in your heart. He guides you in so many ways. I was thinking about this earlier, and I had to kind of chuckle. You meet somebody, you fall in love, and the first time you ask her on a date, hi, oh, yeah, it's like, what if she says no? And she's thinking, I wonder if he'll ever ask me, but what if they can't? It took a lot of courage to ask the girl that you wanted to go on a date. You get, you know, this rough exterior, but on the inside you're putty. You can't show that you have weaknesses as a person. And then when you want to ask this woman to be your wife, unless you really already knew, even still, there's the chance. It's a scary situation. You got this ring and you're proposing to the woman of your dreams. Will you marry me? And then there's that Ugh, second. <laughs> but it takes courage to ask somebody to spend the rest of your life together to do something like that with you and for you. You don't know for sure, but that's God. You put faith in the situation and you went and you took all the courage you needed. And there you are, many mm -hmm. years later. Some not so many. However, it still takes the courage. And it's something to be proud of that you have the courage. So it brings us to Numbers 13, 20 in the New King James. Whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests or not, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the season for the first ripe grapes. Now this is when Moses had sent the spies in to 
see if you know they could overtake it. Well, it takes courage for these people to walk into this place they know nothing about to find out and be a spy. It's a whole different world now what spies can do, but they went in there. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough courage with everybody around them, so they had to wait 40 more years to do it. You know? But you got to be of good courage. If the Lord has sent you to do something, there's a reason. That doesn't mean you're supposed to have to do that. But he's also giving you the test of courage and faith. Okay, let me see what you're willing to do for me. Like Abraham with his son. Put him on the fire. Yeah, not the fire, but the wood. It takes courage. It's a test. In Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. Now there's two things right there. Be strong and courageous. God goes with you. He's telling you, you're never alone. You may feel the fear. Take a deep breath and give it to the Lord. He will take you through it every step of the way. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him, in the presence of all Israel, be strong and courageous. It's a choice. It's a step. It's faith. For you must go with his, this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. <clears throat> The Lord himself goes before you. Again, he goes before you. He goes with you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. It's very clear. God has given you this opportunity to do it. He is with you. He will go before you. He is around you, in you, everywhere. Take that deep breath. Take that first step. There's the courage. There's the faith. You're going to run into situations. You're going to find the fear. Give it to God. Cast it away as we were singing. Act your knees to the Lord is where you have it all. Give it to Him. It doesn't do any good to be afraid. It doesn't get you anywhere. God is always there. As long as you are a child of God and Jesus is your Savior, He lives in you to take you where to go. If you're going the right way, you don't ever get that, and eh -eh, don't do that feeling. But if you're over here going off to the side, and you get that, and eh -eh, don't go there, okay, there it is. You're hearing it. But when you're going the right way, you may not hear anything. Then you trust with your courage and your faith that you're doing the right thing can't go the wrong way and not hear something telling you don't do that. But he's always there before you, with you, and in you. 2 Samuel 4, 1. When Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost courage, and all of Israel became afraid, alarmed. Now what's really sad there is that's false courage. It's put in the wrong place. I do not put my courage in someone else. I do relate, rely on Alan a lot to help support my courage and my friends. But you have to have the Lord. Because if you lose your courage, you didn't have it, the faith in the first place. And you have all these people that are depending on you. Which that's where their courage is, which is misplaced courage as well. But when they see this person that they think is their leader to take charge of everything, and all of a sudden because this guy died, he's crumbling, they fall apart. There's something missing. Your individual courage is as important as your faith. Altogether, you're unstoppable. But that's supporting each other, not trying to take care of each other. You do take care of each other in different ways, but you cannot be somebody else's courage. You cannot be somebody else's faith. You can help them learn and grow, but you cannot do it for them. Second Chronicles 15, 7 through 19, or 7 through 9, excuse me, through 19. There's a long one. <laughs> but as for you, be strong and do not give up right away. 
Be strong. Do not give up. That's your courage. When little kids are learning to walk, they fall down. They get up. They fall down. They get up. You get stuck in a snowbank up in this part of the country. You just stop and let it sit there until it melts and you can drive it away. No, you get up and you push. And depending on where you're at and what's going on, it takes a lot of courage to get out of that car and push it out of a snowbank. It could be in the middle of darkness all around. It could be 40 below wind chills. You have a choice. You sit there. That's not courage. Take the courage. Trust the Lord. Oh, let's see. For your work will be rewarded. When you're strong and do not give up, that's your courage. You will be rewarded. You don't see this big checklist of, ah, you did good today. Ha ha! But you know it. You feel it. And God shows it to you in many ways. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Azariah, I said that right earlier, <laughs> son of Oda, the prophet, he took courage. He removed the detestable idols from the whole land of Judah and Benjamin and from the towns he had captured in the hills of Ephraim. Now, there's courage because you had a lot of people thinking, this is what we're supposed to do. This is how it's been. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Wipe all that out of there. There's a big bonfire ready to go. Those are idols. They're not the Lord. They're trinkets. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the portico of the Lord's temple. Now that is a gift of God, to God, to repair that and rebuild it and teach the right way. He then assembled all Judah and Benjamin and the people of Ephraim, Menseah and Simeon, who had settled among them, for large numbers had come over from Israel when they saw that the Lord, his God, was with him. Now, that takes a lot of courage to tell everybody around you, we're not doing this anymore. Getting rid of all that, we're going to restructure the whole country. You're going to have some protests. You're going to have some people, you know, not agreeing. And then you're going to be right in the thick of it, right in the middle. You are the center of attention saying, no more of this. So he gets all that done. He fixes it up. And lo and behold, here comes another country waiting to celebrate with you. You took courage, and it multiplied mm -hmm. for you. It improved. It got bigger and better because... It was seen that the Lord, his God, was with him. Amen. People see that. People don't realize that's what they see, especially your unbelievers and your unsaved. They see something about you, and they're like, why is that person so different? They don't like you immediately because Satan's in the way, and then stomp on him and send him away and let them see it. It shines. God is everywhere. And when they're not even realizing they're hungry for it, they start to see it in you. And then, of course, you've got David. I mean, this kid, <laughs> this little kid out of the field, going after this seven-foot-plus monster with a slingshot and five round smooth rocks. And he only needed one. Now, a lot of people think that is like a yeah, no, the youth, you know, they're so foolish, they just jump in and do things. Well, we all did it. You show me, you know, otherwise there's somebody who lived in a box that couldn't do anything. But, yeah, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. <laughs> so, boom, and down he goes. There is courage. That is one of the biggest examples a person can use for courage. And it did wonders for him. In Ezra 7... 27 and 28. <clears throat> Praise be to the Lord, the God of our, an of our ancestors, who has it into our king's heart to bring honor to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem in this way, and who has extended his good favor to me <clears throat> before the king and his advisors and all the king's powerful officials, because the hand of my God, uh, because of the hand, mm -hmm, because the hand of my Lord, because the hand of the Lord my God was on me. I'm glad you knew what I meant. I took courage and gathered leaders from Israel 
to go up with me. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it does take courage to walk up to a bunch of people and say, look, I've got this idea, let's go. I have to say, it did take courage for me this morning to tell you the information and to say this is what we're requesting and we were told to do because nobody wants to be told no. Nobody wants to hear the other, but that's part of life. It goes with it. Matt, one person walked up to all these, took the courage and gathered the leaders from Israel to go up there with me. All of you, follow me. You're not in the military. <laughs> You're not in charge of all these people, but let's go together. To collectively, we can do this. In Matthew 14, 25, 31. <clears throat> Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Now, these men are met fishermen. They have been all their lives. They're grown men. They've seen many things. But for them to think they're seeing a ghost and terrified is kind of a wow. <laughs> you know, first of all, you don't see those things on the water, so you know it's a different feel for them. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. Do not be afraid. It is I. Okay, now they're thinking this ghost is talking. <laughs> so, Lord said, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied. You know, he was always the first one to jump out. You know, act before you think. Sometimes that is how your courage works. But Peter, you know, he really didn't have a problem. Lord, if it is you, Tell me to come, on to, uh, come to you on water. <clears throat> come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. Two men ever have walked on water. Jesus, J um, Peter didn't go very far, but he had enough faith with his courage and trusted that he could do it. And he did. His faith was in Jesus. He's with you everywhere. And because of that, you will do these miraculous things with courage and faith. But then the human side come out. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? He wasn't angry. It wasn't, you know, he knew what was going to happen. God doesn't get mad because... You're human and you don't have all your courage all the way. But he took that first step. I mean, yeah, uh, can you imagine how amazing it would be to be walking on water? Peter got to do it as a complete human, not half man, half God human. What better way? I mean, he did it. That's courage. When you can get out of this boat, in the waves, in the wind, and in the middle of the night, there it is. I love that part of the Bible because it's just so wonderful. Take courage. Don't be afraid. It is I. He is here. Be with him. Listen to the words of the Lord, not the other end. Because Satan sneaks in and he starts to break down that courage and that faith. Well, kick him to the curb. I can do this because I have the courage of the Lord. And that is where your courage lies. Still, the idea of walking on water is pretty awesome. And then, you know, in Mark 6.52, it says, Take courage, it is I. And don't be afraid. So it's not just in one place. You have the opportunity to be reminded. Our Bible has repetition, so we do not forget what the Lord wants for us. Be kind, be good, be love, be strong, be courage, be faith. Be everything that God put in us. Acts 4, 10 through 13. Then this is, or, and then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, the man for Jesus, whom you served, uh, crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. He is our everything, rock, cornerstone, strength. Salvation is found in no one else. So if you want completeness, you have to have that. 
for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, two very strong men, and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, just like us, ordinary, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. They saw it. The people around them saw it. There's something different about these guys. They, don't, they couldn't put their finger on it. Well, they weren't learned yet either. But these are not people that had gone to colleges. These are the people that the Lord picks. I like myself. I haven't had the schooling. He finds somebody hungry and he uses them. And he knew that these men were strong in their faith and in their courage and what to do. He'd walk up to people and say, stand. And they'd stand. Be healed. They were healed. Be strong. They would be strong. But people see this in you. Every one of us. When we go out in public, we have a glow about us. And people are drawn to it. Have you ever been somewhere and you're just doing, sitting there at lunch or buying groceries? People just walk by and they're just kind of like, what's different about you? You know? And you know, people just start walking, hi! You know, I was just in the, you know, and you know, it just, they are drawn to you. It seems really strange, but have you ever noticed? When you go somewhere, somebody finds you. They're using their courage that they don't know they have to get closer to the Lord. And they're learning about it. So you are a beacon in the light, even though it's light, they see it. Oh, Father, here's our courage. <laughs> we had a lot of fun finding these. <laughs> you don't need a big old badge put on your chest because it already shows, people see it in you. And smile because you know you've got it. And it was really a fun movie anyway. <laughs> but that's how it is. You accept Jesus and you've got more than courage. Oh, Father, thank you for the word that you have provided for us. Thank you for this to get deep into our beings, deep in our souls and our spirits for everyone be able to use this in Jesus name and now we will have communion <laughs>
saved and the option. <laughs> it is an option for those who do not take this seriously and go to heaven. And for those that have not taken Jesus as their Savior, there's a simple prayer say with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. And with that little prayer, you are now a child of God. Jesus lives in you. You have been saved and going to heaven, which is the ultimate home. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.